Bienvenidos a este Welcome to this seminar and before we begin we'd like to re remind you that if uh, you need simultaneous translation we have the uh, devices uh, at the entrance. We'll begin with a question. We are uh, clear on uh, the barriers that uh, women and diverse groups in the region face. Are we doing something about that? Uh, during this seminar, we'll come to understand what's happening in the region, what solutions are being deployed, and obviously we'll talk a bit about how we can unblock uh, uh, how we can work to make sure that Latin America can uh, flourish with these diverse groups. We'll begin with Judith Morrison. She is the IDB's uh, main advisor on social development related issues. Dicen que parece a they say that it's like Portugal, but with deep African roots. Why? Because of its music, its uh, drums, its careful movement, because of its cuisine, fried, delicious, savory, because of its African traditions. These traditions and religions that tell ancient powerful tales. Where am I? Where could I be? Am I in Portugal? Am I in Brazil? Am I in Africa? I am in Salvador de Bahia, a place that I had always wanted to see. As someone born in Brooklyn, New York, with uh, deep roots in the southern United States, I had always wanted to visit this wonderful place. And uh, really, it was more fascinating than I had imagined. The sense of uh, uh, Africa was everywhere, but 80% of Afro descendants that are part of this uh, rich culture were not uh, seen in tourist areas. They were almost invisible kept in the most marginalized areas, in the poorest places, in the uh, lowest paid jobs, in kitchens, in the most uh, 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 remote areas and, and cleaning. And these people were invisible. And the worse off were women. Even uh, women that uh, worked in jobs that were traditionally for men, even they earned much less. Unfortunately, in Latin America and the Caribbean, this is a situation that is all too frequent. We see it uh, time and again, where women work, earn less, 23% less than men. Afro descendants, 25% less. And Indigenous women can earn up to 60% less. Women, Afro-descendants, the disabled, members of the LGBTQ plus community are the majority of Latin America and the Caribbean, more than 70% of the people of the region. Are we making, uh, are we reaching our full potential if we exclude these people? I don't think so. Let's go back to the example of Bahia. Mm. Specifically, what happens when a city grows without all of its people? It is, uh, em it, it becomes empty because in, in Bahia, the cradle of Afro-descendant culture, two-thirds of its population left the city. These were the people uh, who were the stewards of uh, all of the cultural elements, uh, gastronomy, culture, everything that's needed for economic growth. They were left out. What does that mean? It's like 
Spain without flamenco, or Italy without uh, anyone to look after its gastronomy. It was tough. But what did uh, Salvador decide to do? They decided to get to work. I was fortunate to be part of that process. And it was uh, really smartly done. Uh, it was a process that started by listening to people, listening to their views, their, their ideas, their dreams. And uh, we heard from a cook, uh, one of the best chefs in the city. She was Afro-Brazilian. And she said to us, it's not uh, to my credit. Uh, or it's not, there is no credit for me. Credit is only for white men. When I have uh, access to credit, it's not enough to open up a restaurant. Uh, so the woman told us, I decided to build a restaurant in my house. I can only open two, three times per week if I'm lucky. It's a very common story in our region where 30% of women have uh, uh, barriers to accessing credit. But Bayer decided to make a change by working together, bringing the private and public sector together. They decided to uh, change the situation. First, for the public sector, they decided to provide training and uh, to uh, enable uh, bringing in these businesses into the formal sector in Brazil. And it worked. These businesses are now growing. These uh, businesses uh, now mm, have a way to achieve their dreams. More than uh, 1,500 Afro-Brazilian businesses uh, received training in the region. After all that, uh, entrepreneurs uh, responded. And very happily, because they decided to respond by building Afro-Brazilian businesses throughout the city, especially in the historic areas. So they created marketing, um, software development uh, companies, educational, uh, along with the more conventional uh, businesses, music, food, restaurants. Uh, after uh, the seeds were, were sown, the flowers boom, bloomed, as if it were an adage. For every dollar invested in a woman-owned business, the return is two dollars. For men, especially at the uh, early stages, it's one to one. These are numbers from the Boston Consulting Group. We've seen evidence of this in other parts of the region. Consumers, people uh, believe in and want to support uh, LGBTQ businesses those who uh, are in favor of those rights also seek out businesses that support these groups. Investing in diversity works. And it really worked in Salvador. In 2022, the convention center in Salvador held more than 90 events, creating opportunities and generating a billion uh, reals for the local economy. That was uh, from lodging, restaurants, transportation, uh, ticket sales. So it was a whole universe of business that was generated around that uh, uh, tourist movement. And this year, the projections are even are call, are calling for more. 9% uh, growth in these businesses this year for those types of activities around the uh, convention center. What did I learn from all of this uh, wonderful story around Salvador? First, I learned 
that it really is possible to achieve economic growth uh, that includes everyone. Second, I learned that having a more uh, level playing field for business results in uh, gains for all. And third, the most important part of this whole story is uh, public and private sector engagement, working together to create a space for businesses, for opportunities for the city as a whole. That was the main ingredient in this process. Thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias, Judith. Thank you very much, Judith uh, Morrison, for your presentation. And we are now going to uh, introduce our panel. We have representatives from the private sector as well as the public sector. And we are going to look at how important these partnerships are to provide access to women and diverse groups. These are opportunities uh, of, mm, that provide mm, access to labor markets, uh, to economic success, to leadership, and to capital. We are now going to introduce our panelists for the day. Good afternoon. I'm going to ask our audience, both here and in uh, joining us online, to stand up. Everyone. Now. I'm going to ask you to take a seat as you hear these uh, numbers on on uh, gender-based gaps. Think about uh, this information and or this number, and imagine a number and then have a seat. Write down that number. That's what we're going to talk about today. We have data on diversity and equity and the challenge is how do we generate sustainable solutions? And I'm therefore honored to be surrounded by disruptors, change makers, people whose experiences have uh, transformed uh, this very important agenda. But for our agenda, we need a very clear purpose. It's not just anyone that uh, gets involved in this cause. So my question, and I'll start with Clemencia for this panel, is when was that the moment in your life when you realized that you wanted to uh, make a change, that something had to be different? Well, thank you uh, very much. Good afternoon. Uh, a special uh, greeting to the... Uh, Inter-American Development uh, Bank and its uh, country office in Colombia, uh, the Andean uh, Countries uh, Department, uh, and my colleagues here in the panel. And, and thank you for uh, providing us with this opportunity to discuss with our uh, um, colleagues from the region to talk about uh, the rights of uh, women I realized that uh, something wasn't right mm, because of what uh, I saw uh, in my uh, native region. Something that uh, we've perhaps all seen, uh, it's a place where we have water everywhere. We have uh, rivers, we have uh, the ocean, but our people have no running water, uh, health education, uh, justice, 
uh, all of that is uh, limited uh, in access for everyone, especially women. So uh, I started to uh, do social work. I, I joined uh, a, a, an organization, a grassroots organization in the north of Cauca, uh, and it was uh, a campaign with, to fight for the rights of uh, farm workers in that part of the region. We worked hard to create the economics, the, the economic conditions necessary for for life in our region, and then working with uh, several women from the region. We uh, organized the first Afro-descendant uh, women's uh, gathering in uh, uh, the northern uh, Cauca Valley, and then created an organization for Afro-descendant women. And it was that, that's been a big part of my life now. And that's uh, the organization where we, I've done my social work, um, um, fighting for equality and equity. And now that we have a uh, new administration, administration that's working to, to make a change, uh, led by Gustavo Petro, our president, our vice president, Francia Marquez. I'm working uh, toward inclusion, uh, advocating for women's rights as part of the president's office for women's equity. Very inspiring. And, and you uh, highlighted the fact that this is some, a purpose that you felt throughout your life that is with you today. Maria Ines, uh, thank you for honoring us with your presence. When uh, did that moment come uh, for you, or a single moment, or many, as, as um, Clemenza was telling us? When, when did you realize you needed to make a change? Well, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, welcome to Panama. Uh, looking back, I, 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 even though I, I've, I've spent a lot of time in, in social work and volunteering and a variety of NGOs, I really uh, got into fighting for gender uh, equality when uh, uh, I uh, joined uh, Servitales in, in Panama, an NGO, and really it was, it was uh, the issue of teen pregnancy that, that really uh, led me to a greater understanding. Uh, and this is important. Uh, just because you're a woman, that doesn't mean you're going to be fighting for gender uh, equality. Another thing I've realized is that sometimes we as uh, women uh, have our own uh, perspective, our own point of view based on our own experiences. Perhaps I hadn't uh, experienced gender discrimination or perhaps I didn't even uh, feel that there was inequality out there, which we know because of the numbers, it's there. But we know that when you're confronted with this, when I look at teen pregnancy specifically, where uh, our society and it's very smart people they they blame that teen girl for what's happened to her and that uh, uh, teen girl would then uh, uh, have many doors closed and, uh, no opportunities and that's when I decided to commit to, to gender to civil society uh, economic empowerment uh, as well as the, the rights of uh, teen mothers. It's very interesting also to see how uh, these uh, um, stories have really come to life uh, through your efforts in the public sector. Gerardo, what about your story when we think about other uh, sectors like the private sector? What was that moment for you that made you start thinking differently and working toward change? And, how does that fit in with what you're doing today, obviously? Thank you um, so much for hosting us. I'm uh, very grateful to be able to uh, contribute uh, uh, to this process as part of Edwards uh, Life Sciences. I've been uh, 
uh, part of uh, manufacturing and part of the corporate world uh, throughout my professional career. And I've always been aware of unemployment numbers in the countries where I've worked. And this is something that you know as well as I do. Um, unemployment rates for women are always higher than uh, what um, uh, we see for men. And what really led me to try to understand what was going on was uh, doing a compare and contrast with something that's very painful, which is the main reason that women have to leave their jobs is in order to take care of children. Uh, so at that point, I, I, I realized that something was wrong. Uh, we realized then, based on our experience, that even though our country does have a, a child care system in order to address that uh, need by design. Uh, it's made so that women with good, decent jobs, uh, it, those women do not have access to that uh, child care system because that is for women living under another type of uh, uh, other types of conditions. So when you have this uh, labor market, if you have a future in that labor market, you, at some point you have to make a decision. Either I continue to work or I take care of my children because if they opt for private child care, that's about 50% of their income, which uh, uh, leads to they, them deciding to stay home with their children and, and leaving their jobs. So that's when uh, my team and I said, we have to do something about this. And uh, fortunately, one of uh, our um, colleagues presented an initial initiative uh, called Gana Tres, uh, which is uh, uh, a collaboration with the public sector, with Child Care Network. There's uh, support provided for these uh, women. It's a subsidy provided so that these women can pay for part of the cost. Uh, our uh, organization is running a pilot program. We provide a certain amount of funding so that uh, women can have their children in, in child care. And then the foundation is charged with the know-how uh, the know -how, how to manage that network and, and they do the research. And that is a critical part. That's what we said. We have to do something and that's what we decided to do. Well, it seems that there is a common denominator here and that is how you move from data to action. That's what we uh, here in what is being said and also uh, how important it is to understand what is happening in the different lives of the people that you have all uh, discussed and also working as part of a team uh, that cooperation is key. Uh, in your story and to think about different dimensions of what we are discussing here, Rebecca, first of all, how are you? And what moment made you take that leap? And uh, how does that come into a play with what you do? now on your day to day. Hello everyone, it's a great pleasure to be uh, with you all today. So I think that uh, for me, it all clicked when I was in the field. Uh, I started as social coordinator for renewable projects uh, in Brazil, in my company, and I only saw about two or three women and one uh, or two of them were doing the cleaning and the other uh, was in the kitchen. And I was wondering why aren't there other women in other roles? Why aren't there women engineers or electricians or other? I would ask different people, uh, other men, why this was, and they said, well, women just don't want to be here. Uh, this work is too hard for them. It's too hot for them. The temperature isn't right. The long hours aren't right. And I'm thinking, well, I'm here. I'm bearing this burden. And so it wasn't so much to me about women wanting to work. It was about not having that opportunity. And that's when it all clicked. And so I thought if women don't have the opportunity but do want to work, then we need to bring these opportunities to these women to give them more job options. and to not force them to only take care of their children or to be with their families or being the caretaker at home. We need to start thinking about how women can also uh, have a better life than having these uh, endless shifts of work that they have to do and uh, bring them these opportunities. Sure, and also a uh, systems change is the other common denominator. We know that there are layers and layers here. Uh, when we look at research that looks into um, bias, it's uh, also about understanding what's behind it and how these things can be changed. 
with that, I have this question, my for you, my dear. What was that moment for you when you knew that you wanted to change the rules in an environment that was、uh, dominated by men and、uh, taking all the challenges you take on today? Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I、uh, am glad to be here.、Uh, thank you to the IDB for having me. On behalf of the Uh, Inter -American, um, Inter American Development Bank. It's a pleasure to be here with my colleagues. And as、uh, Raquel mentioned, the、uh, question really comes down to the moment when you find yourself to be、uh, someone who is diverse. So you identify as a woman, as being black. When it comes to、uh, sharing my own perspective, I was、uh, hoping to、uh, find a way to innovate, to bring my profile to the criteria, to、uh, have black women and black men being able to、uh, hold a certain position.、Uh, that was one of the things I was thinking about. I wanted to、uh, make an investment to create more business opportunities, and as Clemencia said, black women. We're simply not reaching certain places, and I was trying to understand why that was. In part, it is because the professional networks are very limited. If you study in a given university, you have access to a very specific group of people, and that is what can help to increase networking opportunities and knowing the right people. This is where. We started to look at how you can create opportunities for investing in businesses, and training is very important in that. Fifty-six percent of the population in my country is black or、uh, of mixed race, and yet we're not in leadership positions. So that was an issue that uh, increasingly uh, was interesting to me. Sure. Great. Thank you very much. We know that, given the current research, there's a lot of talk about intersectionality. So the same way that in the past we would talk about data, now we talk about concepts. And from everything that you have just、uh, said and what was being contributed, we started to understand what that word meant. Because when we talk about our region, we talk about a region where everyone, particularly,、uh, this is the case for women. Diversity is multifaceted. Not only when you look at it from indigenous communities' perspective, but also for、uh, people with a disability or who belong to a different group. That is an issue that we should put on an agenda to address all of the different points that you raised. So let's come back to the major challenge, and I would like to know. What you are doing that is different, uh, Clemen? Uh, what is different in how you think now versus、uh, when you started all this? What would you be tapping yourself on the back for because of something you're doing well? What is what you can think about that would lead you to thank your earlier you for what you have done, especially on a on such a lonely road? Sure, I think that the challenges are still pretty、uh, formidable. We haven't lost hope. We、uh, actually came together with other women to keep on fighting. And what I think the government is doing today, this is an administration that wants uh, uh, Colombia to be a global power, particularly in its continuous search for.、Uh, Rights and human rights and ethnic rights, and particularly for、uh, the women's struggle. We are taking on、uh, a number of things from our institution, making sure that women are financially empowered. We need the right、uh, conditions and the right、uh, assurances for productive work in order to also allow for the kind of independence that can allow women to fully exercise their rights、uh, in all of their diversity. We're also creating conditions. For women to be part of the peace-building process, making sure that there is also a safety component. We are looking to see more women、uh, in politics, 
but we're also developing different ideas for preventing a gender-based violence. Uh, this is a scourge that unfortunately affects us uh, in the deepest way possible, and not only in Colombia, but throughout the entire region. So to me, what we're doing is all part of the same thing. What we're doing now is the continuation of work that was started by other women and with other women in different parts of the country, women with different profiles and backgrounds. But ultimately, when you look at who is building this social fabric, it's women, women building peace and creating the right environment for there to be dignity and inclusion and especially for there to be social justice in our country. Thank you very much. That's very inspiring. Um, Arenes, you shared the, the story of a network that was important to you. How do you see that working its way in, into the agenda uh, for the stuff you do now uh, on, the, on the public side and that consistency that Clemencia was just talking to us about? Well, I think like all other countries in the region and in the world, we're facing many challenges. Uh, Panama is not spared from these. I think an important part and a fundamental part of our everyday work has to do with uh, the uh, strategy to combat inequality. This is the, why there's a Comena uh, plan that is our national uh, agenda is really important because we're taking on these things. We're also focusing on closing the gap, closing the gender gap. There is the gender equity initiative. We have that uh, in Panama and in other countries in the region, we see the same thing. And this gender parity initiative started in 2018 with the support of the IDB. And during the current administration, we have been able to take it a step further. We have 75 different players. We're talking about government, the private sector, NGOs, all working in tandem on strategies and action plans and have really made a difference in the lives of over 15,000 women while closing financial gaps, as well as uh, through the strategy to help bring young and disadvantaged women into the workforce and uh, STEAM strategies also women's entrepreneurship strategies. And the goal of all of this is to uh, tap into strategic partnerships across all industries, because when we talk about inequality and particularly gender inequality, that is not a fight that only the government can wage. It's something that we should all be part of because we're talking about human rights at the end of the day. Therefore, this is something that falls on all of our shoulders and should be across industries. Great, thank you. When uh, we talk about action, Gerardo, when in the private sector you have these agendas come in and then you think about uh, other kinds of impact, impact on investment, uh, ROI, how can all of this be actionable and how does this relate to what uh, made you take that first step and what can you say on that? Thank you. I think that when you look at all of the challenges we're facing as a society, that playbook is already there. You see uh, public-private partnerships and also individual engagement. I think we should all be active players in all of this. And I really liked what you said a second ago. Let's uh, go from numbers to action. As I said, we're lucky enough to have a female employee Vanessa Barrantes, uh, we're very proud of what she has done. She is a, a mother uh, and uh, exemplary professional. She shared her story, and I think that you said it just right. At the end of the day, it all comes down to investment. Yes, we're using uh, the government infrastructure, but the funds still need to come from employees and, and from the businesses. And so with this pilot, we have tried to understand how we're making a difference. Just to give you an idea, our organization at this time has probably 2,200 employees, 60% of which are women. Of that 60%, we have about 450 women who, in addition to that, are mothers. Along with the leadership, we have set the aspirational goal of uh, not having any woman having to leave the organization because they have to take care of their children. How do we do that? 
Well, we have to keep working with government agencies, but also internally we need to look at ROI. So far, we have been able to get uh, close to seven or eight women who uh, had a foot out the door and bring them back in. Thanks to that program, we got them to stick around. And we did it as a leadership team, and we would have been happy with just one. But we have also seen different uh, improvements uh, when it comes to uh, women who were late or who weren't showing up for work. And what's important is, as we have all been saying here, that these women are saying that thanks for this, I feel fine, I feel good, because a lot of the research is telling us that many women sometimes have to leave their children with other people, with uh, uh, the elderly, these older folks who aren't really in a condition to take care of children, and sometimes there are problems having to do with addiction and other risks for the child. So when you listen to all of this, and when you actually realize that there is uh, an actual return for the business, that's inspiring and we love to see how this pilot can continue to be self-justifying and can continue uh, to evolve when you have a mom who turns around and says thank you for this program because thanks to this program I'm still here but I also feel comfortable and I see an opportunity to grow in my career I think that, that what that tells us is that we need to keep doing the work and we need to scale it up Great, uh, an impact uh, indicator that can actually translate into uh, the, the story of one person, which can become the story of many people. That's great. Uh, Raquel, I would love to uh, come back to you and think about how important it is to bring a government and the private sector together and looking at, at the link with uh, investments and what this means for everyday work. You have two dimensions to what you do. One has to do with Atlas and the kind of financing and investment that you were able to receive through IDB Invest, but also that, uh, I want to call it a double click. We talked about this before getting on the stage, having to do with the communities you worked with. And I don't want to spill the beans here, but how did that help you really go after the goal that you mentioned in the beginning? Well, maybe I can provide a little bit more uh, background here. We're a renewables business, therefore, obviously, uh, we focus on sustainability. But sustainability isn't uh, only about ESG. It's, all, it's about all processes. And one of the key processes, it comes down to human capital, the talent. We work uh, on a lot of different dimensions, and a lot of this starts with home. What kinds of benefits uh, do we uh, provide, not only for mothers, but also for men having paternity leave, maternity leave, so that our staff can feel reassured when they make that choice. It's important for people to choose to be there, to choose to come to work and to build a better future from within this environment that is just right and it's a safe environment for all employees that is what allows uh, for the creation of solutions that can go outward our biggest impact comes from our projects from what's happening uh, in the field that's where we can get more people uh, having two three thousand uh, staff members working in uh, solar plants and wind farms and that is where we saw a need to really move the needle even more with this segment of the population. Prosperity should never be the prosperity for one, but for all. We are also part of the same uh, energy. La misma energía. This is an employability project, but also one that focuses on STEM to bring more women from the region to work with us. We founded the company in 2017. Our target uh, we have 2% of women who are working on our first uh, projects, but now, thanks to this program and with incentives uh, from PPPs, we actually reach 15%. That's a huge number when it comes to socioeconomic impact because a lot of research has been done and shows that when you actually bring money into the hands of women, that money goes to health care, to uh, the community, so that's really important because the Im social impact can really run deep and can also last a long time. We had two projects 
uh, that we carried out alongside uh, IDB Invest uh, with Blended Finance, uh, also with a gender target. The Blended Finance was useful uh, for our initiative because we were going to reduce the financing rate, but the counter to that was that we could work more uh, with specific targets and goals to uh, better bring uh, people together. And as I was mentioning, in Brazil, uh, race is an important dimension, and we uh, have a very large community of color. And we had this initiative with the IDB, and thanks to that, we had a larger impact, and we got there faster on this intersectionality agenda. Practically 80% of our employees in construction sites are people who identify as black. And this is a number that makes us really, really uh, proud because we can work with a lot of people, many of them disadvantaged in a single program. And these are individuals who many times are outside of the city and those who need most help. And so as Atlas, what we do is really try to advance this uh, agenda, looking at all of the different dimensions, because diversity touches on a lot of different areas understanding how deep the problems go and the fact that we're talking not only about gender but also black women who are uh, at risk, who are mothers. What are the necessary packages for women to say, that is where I want to work? We have a benefit that has to do with a daycare service uh, where women can leave their children because otherwise they cannot work with us. They uh, can't do the training that goes with being employed. And so this is a message I want to leave you with and take uh, advantage of this high-level gathering. A lot of ideas can actually be implemented, can be uh, thought of, but the need to actually scale it up to go deeper is urgent. We're talking not only about women, but also uh, black people, indigenous communities, teens. They all need specific things. There are different segments of the population with different needs, and the benefits package needs to go further, because otherwise they're not going to be at the same level as other disadvantaged groups who have more privileges. So that is something that needs to actually make it to the boardroom it needs to be uh, discussed in uh, management, in leadership, in governments, in businesses. We need to uh, have people who think about what can be done to really level the playing field and give uh, a fair shot to everyone. That's a message we want to leave you all with. Very, very strong message and necessary uh, message. Uh, Raquel, just something that uh, you said, and it has to do with the need to oh, look at the context, to understand where people are coming from, and find that talent and that uh, potential. Maite, when you have uh, someone talk about startups and uh, businesses, they think about the U.S., white men, and these kinds of uh, specific semantic components. What can be seen as different here? What makes a difference uh, going on uh, with what Hakeel was saying? What is what can really add value? What's something that this audience should really know about? Thank you very much. Uh, I think Raquel is exactly right. In our context, uh, what we need is to uh, mobilize within structures to actually get away from the surface and go more towards what's in depth. There are joint ventures. There is an investment fund that f uh, focus on uh, black uh, populations and black women in Latin America. We need to find an investment fund that is focusing on technology and working with black men and women at the forefront. That's a challenge and that's something that we are taking on. This is something that can really help make a difference in the ecosystem. IDB Lab has provided these opportunities. That has created more access for us to be able to grow. In terms of the context, uh, my uh, platform and Black Rocks is an investment fund. This is a BlackRock investment fund, and the idea is to have that name that uh, really 
represents what we are is this uh, black diamond, the uh, black people of Brazil. By developing this solution, we have been able to find ways to uh, accelerate businesses and particularly women-led businesses. That can help more people develop opportunities uh, for their businesses to become part of a network. Uh, Black Rocks have a big potential come from being able to connect people. Those who created the ecosystem, sometimes ecosystems uh, can be too white or too ethnocentric. And this is where we can work with innovation and technology. Uh, our results have been incredible over the last two years. We're, we have worked uh, with 24 different tech startups. They employ people, they uh, secure investments, and uh, the numbers sometimes are above uh, 10 million reais. That has created job opportunities and also opportunities to uh, transform the region. And these are the businesses that lead to other actions. And then there's also the challenge of creating an investment fund that is going to have an even bigger impact. We're talking about 20 different businesses that we are going to invest in. And we're creating opportunities for the people who uh, simply can't uh, access a major investment funds. We're thinking about a venture capital ecosystem, and then that's where we find this gap where there are uh, women-led businesses, uh, these uh, black people sometimes uh, who are marginalized but don't necessarily have access to these major investment funds or they can't get more uh, investment. This is why we need to help them lift themselves up by their own bootstrap, uh, bootstraps. We have our leaders as well. We want uh, to see more black leaders, uh, more of these women in these positions and to make sure that they are part of all of the activities that are happening, never losing sight of the importance of investment. They are individuals who are uh, very competent and if we look at development, uh, investment and business development uh, and opportunities, we create opportunities for people to leapfrog sometimes and uh, gives opportunities for black leaders to be able to contribute to developing and increasing that uh, investment opportunity. Great, thank you very much. I am going to uh, take a risk here and just pause. I know people are thinking about the data to action, from uh, action to people. And then from that, let's talk now about things, uh, the different areas where we are and the rules that apply. I know that what you're talking about is uh, systemic change, especially in the different areas where you are operating. But this is a panel ultimately on uh, partnerships, and you were talking about how partnerships help to give you a boost. So here's what I would like to do, is see if we can play this game. Uh, those of us who are entrepreneurs, uh, sometimes there can be entrepreneurship in the public sector and in the private sector you have a lot of entrepreneurs and usually people who are in those spaces have a dream or they think about a dream and we try to not uh, really read the fine print in those dreams so i'm trying to bring that uh, home here with this panel and i have this question if you're thinking about government if the private sector can give you that thing you, you wish without the fine print, what would you ask for? Or what wouldn't you ask? Well, if I was turning to the private sector, I would say that working in coordination with the public sector is very important. Of course, uh, working uh, from within the public sector, there's a lot you can do. But when you have the private sector alongside you, that can really be a strong instrument to uh, narrow, if not eliminate, the gaps that we have in our region. We look at uh, the uh, technical uh, players and the financial uh, actors. If we all came together, we can really work on focusing on human rights and on advancing the rights of people. And in our case, we're talking about the people who have been left behind uh, or who have been underserved by our governments and previous administrations in, in our case. 
looking at the、uh, places where there has、uh, traditionally been less, and the businesses where people have had fewer opportunities, that would be important. But also looking at the、uh, mining vision that really led to stripping a lot of people of their rights in our region, this can now become an opportunity to help. Close those gaps, find opportunities, and especially for women. I think that as we think about the need for building peace,、uh, the kind of peace that、uh, should go beyond just our country, that's important. There are many countries in the region going through challenging times. There are not necessarily protections or assurances for a society to live freely and in peace. It's also important there to think about how the private sector can help mitigate the kinds of issues that led to conflict in our countries. And part of this has to do with what is happening、uh, with uh, mining resources and, and pretty much ignoring the rights that the communities have. And so maybe that's a good place to start. To understand that、uh, humanity and the issue of people should go beyond、uh, any sort of financial goal we may have. I think that's key. Great. Well, great. That was a, a very uh, broad and, and rich uh, wish, but also very clear. Something that、uh, should be part of a very specific target.、Uh, now, Marines, if you had to think about、uh, something you'd wish for, what would it be? Well, for investment to continue, and to make sure there is affirmative action as we close the gender gap, including women in in your businesses and、uh, leveraging public-private partnerships, like in Panama with the initiative on gender parity, and taking that affirmative action, like what you are doing,、uh, with that work-life balance. With the support provided,、uh, that should be part of a system that every country should have. But again, that kind of、uh, coordinated work that shouldn't only come from the public sector—that's a responsibility we all have. And so, the partners are strategic partners that should support us. Thank you. Excellent. Now we'll move on to、uh, asking something from the public sector.、Uh, What would your wish be, Gerardo? I think you have something in mind. I agree very much uh, with uh, the minister. On the private side, I would say that we expect uh, consistency um, and stability. I think that when we Promote、uh, these programs, and 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 when we have uh, uh, a scattered approach, that leads to conflict. I can give you an example. The the、uh, benefits that we that result in incentives to get people not to, that incentives that that keep them from working. For example,、uh, there are, there's research that says that for every dollar invested in、uh, Early、uh, stages of life, that the return on that is six dollars or more, right? But women then decide that in order to provide that for the children, they decided they decide to、uh, quit working because in order to get that benefit, you have to quit your job because your income is too high. So、uh, policies need to be consistent with our aspirations.、Uh, I, I agree that that we need to work together. Uh, and, and the individual also plays an important role. I, I love what you were saying, Raquel, because、uh, in the end, it's clear there's a lot of different types of diversity, and uh, uh, has uh, and we need to go from a different way of engagement. Obviously, the government needs to provide a consistent、uh, framework for that with legal certainty, so that the private sector can create a bridge between individuals and that aspiration. That's how I would put it. Excellent,、uh, Raquel. Would you add to that? I agree with what uh, uh, Clemente was saying, but investing、uh, in education to me—that is、uh, 
the main way to change uh, society. There's no other way. Mm. If society doesn't start thinking about the collective as a whole, I don't see how we are going to change the future. We can't uh, think about uh, diversity and, and dealing with the society's problems if uh, children from an early life, early stage in life, uh, don't deal with these issues that affect us all. So investing uh, in education and this uh, should be a right for all, not should be just on paper. Education is for all. And that is a way of excluding uh, people today. So in terms of basic uh, education, private education, that's what I would say. So you have this option. Having heard all of that, I think that the only thing I would add is that there's uh, positive initiatives out there with positive results out there. Uh, the the when you uh, make sure that leadership positions are filled by women, that you have uh, black people uh, in large uh, companies, all of that leads to positive results. We've seen that already. So looking at the public sector, uh, when we look at these uh, positive initiatives. Uh, uh, as a basis for future activities. That's how action can can really lead to better results. In Brazil, for example, uh, we have uh, university um, quotas where where the technical knowledge of, of students that arrive to fill those quotas is greater, uh, and that means greater possibilities for the private sector to get a qualified professional uh, um, in the in their ranks, so uh, the public sector working with the, these affirmative action initiatives is very important because it leads to positive results. As Clemente was saying, uh, there there is definitely a responsibility there. Uh, public agencies need to uh, uh, demand uh, affirmative action from uh, the private sector because there is positive uh, results from that. Uh, so that is a possibility. That's an initiative that we need to make sure that these actions truly contribute to society. Great. Thank you, uh, Maite. To uh, round this off, since we have a little time left, you have done a lot uh, on your own. Perhaps uh, you uh, were uh, pioneers in, in your local area where you really played the role of a disruptor working alone again. So what would you say in terms of uh, gratitude uh, where, where you've, you've, you've uh, done all this? What, what would you say as words of gratitude? But gratitude in the sense of uh, we need to continue working on this because this is how we are going to continue to build together. Clement, uh, who would you thank? Well, um, I, I would say that I, I very much appreciate the, the work that we've done jointly with the Inter-American Development Bank in Colombia um, through uh, uh, our agency's uh, work to combat uh, violence against women. Mm. We have several pilots underway in several departments in our country, uh, specifically in departments where we have uh, 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 little access uh, because of connectivity or, or infrastructure. I would also uh, l l express my appreciation for investment in, in the rural area, especially investing in rural women uh, the countryside is a is uh, the part that feeds the res the rest of our society, and and that's uh, the rural sector needs not only economic empowerment, uh, but it also uh, needs environmental stewardship. It needs uh, uh, food security initiatives. We need to do everything uh, possible also around the energy transition. We believe that uh, our life, the lives of everyone, is uh, at risk. And if we don't uh, act responsibly, 
Uh, if we're not committed, if we don't act collectively, it's going to be very difficult to deal with these risks. So our policy as government, where, where we're really uh, betting on women to make this change, we're a little bit more than half of the population in Colombia. So it's not just because of that, but also because the undeniable contributions that we have made in our countries uh, in all of these areas. And that's why we need to make sure that uh, these contributions from women are acknowledged and acknowledged through our actions as a government to uh, pr protect women's rights. And obviously, uh, partnerships are very important in order to to achieve uh, uh, these rights that we're working for. Ines? I uh, would like to begin by thanking the Inter-American Development Bank for being strategic allies in the Gender uh, Parity Initiative, as well as in the work we're doing in Panama for uh, investing in early childhood and everything we're doing in order to really uh, change the paradigm. Uh, investing at an early stage of life for us is the most important thing we can do as a country. I also want to thank the private sector, the NGOs that are part of the gender parity. Uh, so uh, part of the, the, the uh, gender parity initiative is based on uh, actions, concrete plans, and, and action plans to close the gap uh, to combat uh, inequality, especially gender inequality. All that work means that we have uh, served more than 15,000 women. We should continue to work together, uh, work in partnerships, so that because that is the only way to close the gender and poverty gaps, which is so important for me. It's also important uh, for us to continue investing in women. Uh, it's not just a matter of human rights. Uh, it's also profitable. It's good business to include women, to include 50% of the population. So this is contagious, Gerardo, and that's great. Uh, what, uh, who would you say thank you to? Well, first of all, I want to thank you for this forum. I think that uh, uh, this uh, is a message that we can share t with many people and in many places. First, I want to thank the Devi Foundation in Costa Rica. They've been the bridge between the government and the uh, and the private sector to address this very pressing need. Um, and uh, it also, uh, I also thank you to the organization that I represent because it's a different approach that we've adopted here through this pilot. We wouldn't have been able to do it without them. So uh, these are um, uh, core pillars. And also, obviously, our leadership team uh, because uh, they took this on as something that had to be done, and they have been ceaseless in their efforts and in their fight to uh, create a system that protects more working mothers. Thank you for uh, including uh, civil society and the role they play, which is always so important, uh, Raquel. Well, for me, it's uh, whom would I think? Uh, the Atlas leadership team, the ESG team, I would not uh, be here with uh, uh, without them. It's, it's been top-down decision-making where it's uh, let's do this and let's do that. The entire uh, company that, that, that with full of so many people that have helped us so much, doing incredible work on the out in the field. But I also want to thank all of our uh, commercial partners because. Uh, in one way or another, we're able to build capacity. We're able to work together to 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 make this program happen uh, and to do all this together. So I want to uh, thank our uh, contracting uh, partners uh, very uh, specifically, and obviously everyone here at this forum, all of my colleagues, for all of your contributions today. Thank you. Maite, it's your turn. You'll be uh, concluding with this uh, final words of uh, gratitude. Right, it's a challenge to go last here. But first, I would like to uh, uh, um, thank uh, 
uh, my organization uh, for making it possible for me to be here for every all the, the entire struggle for Anita Fiore, Irene, uh, for Magdalena, and uh, uh, all of these women who were pioneers. They were the ones that uh, really forced the issue to create this uh, fund to involve other uh, black women leaders in, in managing these uh, funds. I also want to thank the IDB for the opportunity, um, obviously for the, uh, this opportunity to be here with our colleagues and, and um, to be a part of IDB Lab's uh, uh, initiatives. And I would end uh, here by uh, asking that you leave here with a different point of view, focus on effective action so that you can uh, make a transformative change uh, so that you, you can uh, use what you've heard in this panel in order to create more opportunity to make sure that we have more racial uh, diversity, LGBTQ+, the disabled, um, indigenous women, uh, um, black people in general. We need to have uh, people uh, be proactive uh, to do things right uh, uh, to take action because of what you've seen here and to commit the, uh, your time and your effort because that is how we uh, make a change. So thank you for this opportunity. Well, I'll take the opportunity uh, to say a few words of, of uh, appreciation. Two, uh, first, to the audience here um, for... Uh, coming into this room on challenging issues, issues that are not necessarily trending or fun. These are issues that can be painful that uh, we see when we look in the mirror to the audience that's uh, on the other side of the screen and to you for uh, uh, a lifetime of effort uh, to these uh, hard issues, uh, to find opportunities uh, for the action you've taken and and thank you to the people that have brought this uh, together but this effort together that goes beyond uh, in the numbers we're talking about the, the diversity equity inclusion but when we set objectives for ourselves there are strategic issues to deal with urgent issues to de deal with, which means we need to be uh, active, we need to be present, and we need to be committed. So my gratitude is for these people here, and a round of applause for being here, making this possible. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you uh, very much to all of our uh, panelists. Uh, we've heard uh, experiences from the private sector and the public sector. And we'd like to reinforce the importance of this uh, in order to uh, close this gap. To close, uh, we have Jimena Serrano, our special guest. She's in charge of uh, uh, gender diversity and inclusion at IDB Invest. She's coming right up. ¿Cómo estamos? ¿Ah? ¿Con hambre? How are you? Are you hungry? Let me tell you a story before you go off to lunch. I uh, was uh, thinking about uh, when my son learned to ride a bike. Uh, my husband and I uh, got him a bike and it was parked for a year, never wanted to touch it. And then one day, he decided he wanted to take the bike to the park and to learn. He uh, got on the bike, he would look around, and uh, he would fall. And my, my husband told him, you have to look forward, you have to focus. Uh, and my friends and family, they're scattered throughout the world. When they found out that he was learning how to ride a bike, the, this process became almost a UN debate. In Spain, we would hear, no, just let him learn on his own. From Colombia, I would hear, no, 
you have to uh, imagine, Gabriel, you have to dream that you can ride a bike and you'll be able to do it. And from Paraguay, I heard, no, you have to uh, make him wear shorts because if he wears long uh, pants, they're going to get caught up in the chain. And my son mm, took all that information in and he was progressing a little bit more, a little bit more, mm, riding a little bit farther, a little bit farther. And after several falls and a little blood, a lot of blood, he was able to uh, master it. And why am I sharing this story with you today? Because it is a story of uh, aspiration, of having a wish and going after it. And that aspiration, that ambition is what the region needs in order to achieve the scale and the impact that the lives that we want to improve need. But it's not uh, any old uh, ambition. It, it's uh, uh, ambition that needs to be based on three things that I'll tell you about today. First, intentionality. The uh, decision is that we want to do things a certain way. So we'll go on to the example of uh, Raquel with Atlas. Atlas is a renewable energy country that a company that builds parks in Latin America and in uh, the Caribbean. Uh, they're used to hiring uh, construction crews that tend to be male. But for two parks that they built in Brazil, they decided that they wanted to go out and find a new labor force. So they intentionally decided to uh, train and recruit uh, women in uh, electrical work and mounting the solar panels and uh, construction. Uh, so the results, 530 women, most of them self-identify as black, were hired uh, to uh, build these uh, two facilities. That's 30% of the labor force uh, to build these facilities. And that, uh, bear in mind, is uh, in, in the construction sector in Brazil, women are only 3% of the labor force. By 2030, 30, 15 million green jobs will be created in the region as projected. Let's make it intentional. A part of those should be for women. Let's make it our intention that 50% uh, of these quality, well-paid jobs should go to women. Second, our approach or our, our focus. The problems that the region uh, faces are multiple challenges. We have teen pregnancies, we have uh, gender violence, we have salary gaps. We need to focus on a strategic problem and resolve it. The example of uh, gender parity in Costa Rica, they decided to focus on childcare. And why childcare? Because it turns out that 75% of childcare needs in Latin America and the uh, Caribbean are done by uh, women. So when uh, we had the pandemic, when the childcare uh, needs were exacerbated, The largest segment of the workforce that had to leave the workforce were women over 20 with small children. That is a strategic problem. So what did they do with that initiative? They told us they created a, a pilot program. Eight companies created a co-financing uh, mechanism between these uh, private companies and families. And the results were that since 2019, 1,020 children have benefited from this program. 1,020 children whose mothers, as we heard in the panel, now feel uh, comfortable going off to work because they know that their children are being taken care of. This program has been so positive in its results that there's talk of uh, 
uh, legislating it and uh, legislation to make it a national program. That's scale, ladies and gentlemen. Third, uh, a different point of view. We cannot expect different results from doing the same thing. In Latin America and the Caribbean, more than 82 percent of decision-making roles in the public and private sector are for women, for men. Why is that a problem? Because as human beings, we are programmed to to judge, to analyze what's around us based on our own experiences. Because when you have a homogeneous uh, group uh, making decisions on the development, on uh, credit at banks or lending at banks, it's very easy for us to miss out on those stories that are unlike ours. Let's go back to uh, Maite Lorenzo's story. What if we, we uh, brought uh, Maite's vision to the table? She decided that it was important to generate data that laid bare the financial gap between uh, black-owned businesses and their white counterparts. We should realize that there was a gap there. What if we had a Maite that could uh, identify that opportunity and, and present it, as well as a, a business model to address the credit needs of the more than 45 percent of companies led by Afro descendants in Brazil that uh, want credit but do not have access to it, or bring in other women, other women that uh, can present this opportunity of dealing with the needs of the more than 70 percent of SMEs led by women that have no access to credit. And once again, those that can identify the needs the, the business needs for, for bankers, for investment, that can address that $93 billion uh, gap in investment for SMEs led by women in the region. That, ladies and gentlemen, is scaling up. I ask you to be ambitious. I ask you to get on that bicycle. And let's try to go far. Let's focus on a strategic problem. Let's uh, bring different visions to the table. That is how we will achieve scale. That is how we will make a change in the lives of diverse communities in our region. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jimena um, Serrano. Definitely uh, closing the gender uh, gap requires leadership, commitment, and uh, a lot of collaboration. We hope that this seminar has helped uh, to build a more equal and fair world for ourselves and our future generations. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll be back at 2.30 after lunch for the next seminar. Bienvenidos a Panama. I represent Finvera, which is the export credit agency of Finland. So always when Finnish companies are exporting to Latin America, we are happy to finance their buyers. Las expectativas es que podamos implementar los grandes movimientos que estamos teniendo en la región hacia la equidad, empezando por la salud.